Introduction Troubled Hearts and True Courage We are living in disturbing and draining days, days that distress our minds and hearts. Daniel would have understood our distress because he faced exactly the same thing. Our nation, as with Daniel's nation so many centuries ago, seems to be collapsing from within. What is required in these days is true courage. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 states that the people who know their God will display strength and take action. That is true courage. In every crisis that Daniel faced, he displayed strength and took action, and it was all due to the fact that he knew God. There is a wrong kind of action that is ultimately fruitless, but there is a right kind of action that steadies and quiets the heart and gives great hope for the future. Daniel and his friends model this right kind of action in the first six chapters of the book of Daniel. That's why this book is focused entirely on those six chapters. In the pages that follow, we will learn what true courage really looks like and how it behaves under pressure. In a nutshell, Daniel displayed true courage by fearing God more than man, trusting God with his future, realizing God's governance over all events. True courage is the result of knowing God. Only then can a man display strength and take action. And he can do so with a heart that is calm, steady, and at rest, even in the worst of times. That kind of man knows that even when days look their darkest, God has a good plan. Daniel was one of the Jews in Babylon who had suffered incredible loss. To Daniel and his friends, a message came through loud and clear. There is hope for your future, declares the Lord. That laser beam of hope found in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 17 for Daniel and his friends travels at the speed of light to God's people today. There is hope for your future. That was not only true in Daniel's day, it is also true for us today. And because it is true, it's the basis for your courage. Discouragement is almost at epidemic levels in these days of economic hardship and political turmoil. Everywhere I look these days, I see troubled hearts and troubled minds, sick with worry. And to those of us who find ourselves with troubled hearts, the Lord Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Those are holy words, sacred words, and not to be used flippantly or taken out of context. The first sentence is not to be separated from the second. If you take the first sentence by itself, you have removed the firing pen. We are told constantly that we should not be troubled, depressed, or give in to worry. But why shouldn't we give in to worry? Why shouldn't our hearts be troubled? There has to be a reason for our hearts not to be troubled. I've heard a well-meaning radio and television personality often say, Let not your heart be troubled. Yet every time I hear him utter those words, it troubles me. Why? Because he is carelessly quoting only half of the sentence that has the power to calm the seas in troubled hearts. The Lord Jesus had a reason why he told his disciples and us, Let not your heart be troubled. He went on to say, You believe in God, believe also in me. That's the answer right there. That's the best reason I can think of why our hearts should never be controlled by fear. The truth is, when the events and circumstances swirling around us seem out of control, they are actually under control. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit are in complete control of the events taking place in your life, in the life of your nation, and in the life of the entire world. In fact, apart from Him, there would be no life in the universe at this moment. This is what Paul declared to the Greeks in Acts chapter 7, verses 24 to 25. The Lord who made the earth and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. Paul then goes even further in verse 28 and states that in him we live and move and have our being. There is the reason for an untroubled heart. This is the medicine for whatever might be troubling your heart right now. No matter how hopeless our immediate circumstances, no matter how depressing our future may look, we are to believe in God the Father and His Son. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to turn our troubled hearts to focus on and think about the greatness of the Lord Jesus. John chapter 16, verse 14. 
True courage is found in a heart that believes and trusts in the living God, period.